Amen. Well, my topic is very simple today. Uh, finishing well. Finishing well. Finishing well. However, there is a passage of scripture that supports this idea of all saints. Hebrews chapter 12. So the topic is finishing well. And Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfect perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So the Bible says, therefore, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Who are those people surrounding us? Well, if you were to read Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Moses, by faith, Isaiah, by faith, um, Isaac, by faith, Jacob, by faith, Noah built a boat. Then at the beginning of chapter 12, it says, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Now, I know sometimes we don't feel surrounded by good. Uh, sometimes we feel surrounded by evil forces. But the emphasis on a Sunday like today is to remind us that we are surrounded by great men and women of faith who have made a difference with their lives. Though they were not perfect, they are models for us. They are examples for us on how we can finish, how we can make it to the finish line. Imagine with me, you're in a race and you could hear a crowd cheering you on. Wouldn't you run faster? Would you stay in the race? If you could hear Jesus saying, hang in there, that, I mean, imagine that would be encouraging. If you could hear David saying, don't quit, that would make a difference to you. If you could hear Mary saying, keep praying, your ladder will be greater, wouldn't you be encouraged? And so we all need to hear the crowd cheering us on. I do not think we realize how many people are cheering us on. By the way, we often feel alone because we choose to be alone. But there is always someone you can call. But at the very least, you can think of, if somebody else has made it through, so can I. And one of Satan's plan is to isolate people so that they become lonely and anxious and depressed. He isolates us so that, so that, so that he can move into our mind. He can move into our thought life. He can move into our speech. When you are in isolation, it will shock you some of the things that you'll find yourself thinking or doing. And so I want to remind us today that we are surrounded by people who can encourage us because of the mere fact that they endured and they made it. They are now in glory. So can we. It is also important to remind you that, that as, we, as we have received people in membership, one of my favorite things to do because, see, membership is personal. When somebody takes membership, they're saying, Pastor, you're not alone. We believe in what God, we may not agree with all the things. We really don't think your jokes are funny, but, you know, we're here for the cause of Christ. No. And the soup. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's not only are we surrounded by folks who have gone on, but, but we, I, I want there to be that encouragement, that surrounding also by those that are very much alive. Those were connected to this church. Look, let's look at the passage again. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 2. Notice what he says, therefore. Therefore, since we are surrounded, therefore is based on chapter 11. Those who made it. Notice something that he says, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the author, the foundation. We often hear negative voices saying, you're not worthy, it's not worth it, you'll never make it. it but, but, but we've got to choose to hear the positive voices of the crowd cheering us on saying, you can do it, it is worth it. And so the passage supports the fact that there's a crowd cheering us on. And so I want to give us a few points on how to finish well. How to finish well. Number one, resist entanglements. Resist entanglements. It says, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. And you've got to be, you notice there's always something trying to entangle you. 
And you've got to, it's like taking care of a plant. And you, you always got to, you know, there's always some kind of vine or something out there that's trying to mess up your beautiful plant. Or, and so you've got, you got to always be protecting it. And so you've got to do the same for your life. You've got to know what will keep you entangled. Listen, you've got to know what keeps you in knots. You've got to know what keeps you trapped. You've got to know what keeps you confined, who keeps you confined. You've got to know what and who keeps you restricted. You've got to know what and who keeps you limited. And it says, throw off those things, those things that, that, that entangles us. Listen, what will entangle me will not entangle you. So you've got to know what entangles you. What are you carrying that is affecting how you run? I was talking to one of my members a couple weeks ago, and she said to me, oh, I love to go to Costco. What entangles me will not entangle you. I, uh, I do not love to go to Costco. Between the parking and the crowd, I mean, it's just, but for some people, am I making, it's a simple example, but you get my point. So, but, but, but from on a, on a serious level, I mean, does anger entangle you? Are you easily angered? Unforgiveness, a bitterness, a love of money, pride, poor self-worth could be something that entangles you. Or low self-worth could be something that entangles you. Some other entanglements could be alcohol, unbiblical sexuality, drugs. I mean, in essence, the, the, the three Ps, passions, possessions, and position will often entangle us. But the Bible says you need to throw off all that so easily entangles. Pay attention so that you are not easily entangled. Refuse to stand still because as long as you keep moving, it is harder to be entangled. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. This is an important passage. He, you, notice, you notice we love the promises of God that we love, don't we? But, but here's one of the promises of God. You will have trouble. That's a promise. Now, now you can cancel it all you want. The devil can be a liar all you want. You can plead the blood all you want. But it says you will have trouble. Somebody will die. Accidents will happen. Sickness will come. You most likely might lose a job. You will have trouble. But we have already won. So that's why it's important to stay untangled and keep moving forward because what notice what he says you will have trouble but so that uh, i told you this, these things so that in me you may have peace take heart we have won he has overcome the world and as long as we're in him the trouble ought not to keep us limited restricted or entangled number two run your race Imagine with me this crowd of witnesses. Uh, look, I wish Paul uh, says of one thing in the scripture. Behold, I tell you a mystery. I don't know how these things work. I just know the Bible. He says, but you, because you are surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses, run. That's what the Bible says. And so imagine this crowd of witnesses saying to us, uh, resist the entanglement. What, what does that mean? Uh, in my case, my, my grandmother doesn't have to come back from the dead. She doesn't have to appear to me in a dream or anything. But, but I, I, because of the influence in my life, I can hear her saying, keep going. Don't quit. Remember the God I told you about. He's faithful. Does that make sense? Resist the entanglement. But here's another important thing. Run your race. Notice the your is important. You've got to run your race. Classes, Sister Hassan's race and mine are not the same. We all, there may be similarities, but, but you've got to be intentional about running your race. My calling is different from yours. We, we each have different gifts, but we've got to run our own race. You've got to discover what God has called you to do and run your race. You've got to walk away from whoever or whatever hinders you and run your race. Remember this thought. You don't have to finish first, but you must finish. Christianity is that you don't have to finish first, but you must finish. Once you've accepted Jesus Christ, the prize is yours. Heaven is yours. Victory is yours. But you must finish the race to get the prize. And to get the prize, you must stay in the race. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Here's what Paul said. Here's what he says in verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And notice what he says. I kept the faith. 
Paul finished his race and we must finish ours. When we think of people who have died in the Lord, they have finished their race and they're somehow cheering us on to finish ours. Let me give you point number three. Remain focused on Jesus. I think if, if David, because you know, some people have a hard time thinking about somebody that they know sending them a message. So let me, let, me, let me bring it to your Pentecostal level. If you were to have an encounter with David, we can all relate to that. Okay, I thought. Or, or Mary. Or Paul. Okay. If you got a text from Paul, and he says, I'm Paul, Saul of Tarsus. Remember me? You identified him, and it's really him. He would tell you these things. Resist the entanglement. Run your race. And he'll tell you this. Remain focused on Jesus. Peter would especially tell you, don't take your eyes off him. When he gets you on that water, don't take your eyes off. Don't focus on the wind around you. Keep focus on Jesus. Keep your focus on who called you. Keep your focus on who saved you. Keep your focus on eternity. But how do you do that, Pastor? Spend time with him daily. Get into his word. Be among people who love him. People are also focused on him. Eternity is set, beloved. I know where I'm going. I hope you know where you're going. But we've got to keep our eyes on the one who will get us there. So refuse to get distracted. Satan will use even your good desires to get you distracted. Satan will use even your good desires to get you distracted. So you got to keep your eyes focused. Listen, Proverbs chapter 28 verse 14. Blessed are those who fear to do wrong. But the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. Blessed are those who fear to do wrong, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. Listen, Satan has no problems using your good desire. It is a good desire to have a house, to have a job so you can have a life. You can buy a house, you can get a car, but Satan will use that job to keep you from church. He will use that job to keep you from your family so you can have family time. Satan will use even the family to keep you from time with God. I'm just so busy and this children, it never stops. He will use good desires. I mean, fellowship is great to fellowship. But if you have so much time in fellowship and you're too exhausted to pray a quality prayer, he can use a good thing to keep you, uh, to cause you to, to become unfocused on the right things. He'll help you get the boat, the car, the house, the job. He'll even help you get the spouse. If he knows that that money, that job, that spouse, those children will get your focus off Jesus. In this season that we are living in, it's important that we learn to throw off some things. Maybe even walk away from some people. So that we can properly and fully focus on Jesus. I read the story about this dude from Tanzania. He was running in a race. He got injured very badly. And he kept on limping to get to the finish line. And everyone, by the time he, I mean, he was so badly injured. His limp was terrible. Everybody had left the stadium. And there was only one reporter left. When the guy finally got to the finish line, the reporter asked him, what are you doing? Why, why did you have to do that? And the runner said, my country did not send me to start the race. They sent me to finish the race. Beloved, that's what we are each called to do. Accept Christ as Lord and Savior. Live for him. Live his way. Be obedient. But finish our race. And my hope is that you will find encouragement even from among us. But you can think of people in your life that you have known who have finished their race. Could be the great Billy Graham, Charles Stanley, people who have, uh, the, the Wesley brothers, people who have finished their race. And on the tough days, you can hear them saying, keep going, Dawkins. I can't wait till you get here. Keep going, Eleanor. We'll sing Rock of Ages together. I, am I making sense? Keep going, Matthew. Keep your focus on heavenly things. You can hear them saying, keep going, Gabby. It is worth it. And my hope is that each of us who are believers... We would learn and we would recognize and we are at a place where we are realizing that, you know what? It is worth it. It is tough. It is worth it. But it will even be more worth it when we see Christ. 
So yes, in this life, we are pressed on every side with all kinds of troubles, but we will never be crushed. We are perplexed, but we will never be driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we will never be abandoned by God. We will get knocked down, but we will never be destroyed in Jesus' name. So with your heads bowed, what entanglements do you need to resist today? Do you need to start your race? Do you need to commit to running your own race? Hmm. For some people, life has caused you to take your focus off Jesus. There's a race to run. Souls to be impacted. Fellow believers to meet again. A God to encounter and to worship. So let's make the right choices. Let's choose to resist the entanglements. Let's choose to run our race. Let's choose to remain focused on Jesus. Father, help us to run with perseverance the race marked out for us. God, we want to run this race with faith in you, trusting in you, focused on you in every way. Help us to turn from sin and all kinds of entanglements. Help us not to toy with becoming entangled. Help us not to become entangled with the pursuit of worldly things. Help us to live our lives in such a way to make our lives count for your glory. We want our lives to count for your glory this week. We want our lives to count for your glory this month. We want our lives to count for your glory this year. Help us not to do anything less than fix our eyes on Jesus and live for him. And God, surrounded by this hall of faithful men and women who have trusted you and followed you, may we follow in their footsteps, in their example, looking to Jesus, who is indeed the perfecter, the founder, the pioneer of our faith. Help us to grow in faith. May these words from Hebrews chapter 12 be true to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hands, lead me on, let me stand. someone might be facing but the word storm resonates with many today so father through the storm through the storm in the storm may they know you experience you beloved the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and office on Jesus Christ who is our Lord and every blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is upon you and with you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.